Okay, welcome everybody. I'm Jill Davey, and I'm one of the teachers with True North Insight, and uh, here on a Zoom call with the community, and we're recording this uh, for our True North Insight channel, and some folks like to uh, practice again or listen later or find it when they're searching different topics. So uh, welcome whenever or whoever you are. This, as you may have noticed from the title, is part four of something called the five aggregates. And the five aggregates, there, I, down below this recording, I'll put the links to the other previous three sessions if you, if you want to catch up on them, but also it's okay to just drop in. Um, we were talking last week about how there's different ways of developing wisdom or learning something and and just hearing is kind of the first or one of the first ways and so this may be the first time you hear this and so it doesn't need to make sense it does, you don't need to get it um just just to, being introduced to some of these um insights from the Buddha is important and then then there you know there's time to experience them for yourself and to reflect more deeply and study it when you hear it again um, so these five uh, aggregates is how it's usually translated means like a, a grouping a pile of different elements that get kind of put together and create a sense of me. I call them like the eye maker system. Like it's, it's this, to be able to see, to kind of, the, the Buddha had this amazing insight to this. It's really more, another concept. It's not something to be clung to, but it can be a really helpful, insightful way to look at how I am constantly recreating myself, my identity primarily, and 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 most of us do this as well if we're not seeing with wisdom and insight. Uh, so I won't go into depth with the previous three because there's other recordings on those, but just to name that the first of these five elements in the heap of me <laughs> or me making is um, what's called form. And that just means this the uh, form, but also all the forms, all the all the things have form made of elements. Um, this one um, in particular is referring to the sense doors, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, touch, and the mind. Um, and this form of being is when seen with wisdom and clarity, we see it's impermanent and changing and I'm not the same person I was yesterday even. Or, or certainly as a child. And so the second aspect is called Vedana or feeling tone. Feeling tone means that when these senses, this form makes contact with its environment, it, its world, other beings, all the things, all the everythings, in that moment of contact of, you could just say one of them seeing, the eye opens and makes contact. And in that contact, there's an immediate experience called that we call pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral, neither pleasant nor unpleasant. It's different than liking and not liking. And, and um, it's, just a really bare, bare minimum contact, there's a Vedna, 
So there's a lot, it's more to say about Vedna, but there's previous recordings on that. So I'm just going to kind of list it tonight. And then the third piece aggregate in this heap is uh, what's called perceptions. And this is when we perceive mm, it. This is where we name something. So the eye opens and it lands and immediately because of history, because of language, um, names it as glass and could also name greenish glass and, you know, whatever other aspects of it to, um, that are part of the perceptions of what we remember, what we've been taught, and it places a thing there as soon as I perceive it as that separate, it's separate from me and that creates me. I either want it or don't want it or don't pay attention to it. <laughs> so if you're just tuning in tonight, all of that probably, it's okay if that doesn't make sense because there are a whole other sections on each one of those. Tonight is part four and part um, the fourth aspect here of this system of creating a self constantly is called Sankaras. That's S-A-N-K-H-A-R-A-S. I'll put the word down below in the YouTube description. And this is most often translated as mental formations. There's other lots of, and again, translating words from Pali is often very difficult because they're, they're, they can't be really described in a, a translation. A bunch of words is more helpful to really get a picture of it. So I'll offer some more uh, descriptions here. But to say, um, in terms of the root word of this, sankara, the first part of that word comes from the root sam, S-A-M, and that means together. And kara, K-A-R-A, means making. So it's making something together, It's or doing. It, it can also mean doing. So it's that which puts together. There's an... an active component here um, of mental fabrications, mental formations, concoctions is another um, translation or description of this, mental concoctions. I like that one. <laughs> um, fits. Um, also sometimes called volitional formations. So there's an aspect of intention, uh, an aspect of um, karma, which I'll get into in a moment. So it's it's really the stories. It's the story machine <laughs> that that we're all familiar with, and it's probably why we come to meditation because it's like, oh, the stories, the constant stories of liking and not liking and who am I and who are they especially and the judgments and the wanting and uh, all the constant commentary on our experience of living there's this constant narration happening that uh, when we pay attention can be uh I was going to say crazy making and that didn't feel appropriate. So I, it's, it can be just like super stressful and annoying. And when we realize how constantly this chattering narrating is happening. Um, so these mental formations refer to all these processes and qualities that 
like thinking, emotions, volition. Um, papancha is another part of this, where, like mm, mental proliferation. Um, and here, the the I, the me, is really reinforced and clung to. It's really like we back it up with the stories. We're like, we've already in the previous things that happen instantly created a self. But here it's really like justified, reinforced, supported. You know, this is true. I am right. They are, you know, um, all of all of that. Uh, in each of, okay, so then let me just connect these dots then a little bit, if I can. Um, so let me see if I can have an example here. Okay. So I'm imagining that I'm sitting outside somewhere and maybe the eyes are closed and, or not, doesn't matter. But there's a sound of a, a bird sound that particularly stands out in the sensory field. And so that sense door of the ear, actually the whole body, but particularly the ear is making contact from another object in, in the world. This vibration of sound is meeting the ear. And in that contact, there's an experience of Vedna that happens for all of us automatically. And depending, it changes. It's not a constant thing. So if it was a pleasant sound in, in one particular moment, That would be the Vedna, the second part of the five aggregates is like, oh, pleasant. In also instantly happening at this almost the same time is the perception of ah, bird. I've already named it like instantly bird, or I might name it like uh, if I recognize the sound of it, you know, blue heron or something. And there's even a mental picture of kind of where it is and kind of projecting where I think it the sound is coming from. And so the naming, the memory, and the sense of separation that's there and I'm here has all happened instantly. And then because it's a pleasant sound in this story, uh, then the next part, the mental formations that we're talking about tonight might kick in like, oh, that sounds like a blue heron. I wish I could see it. Where is it? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That sounds so prehistoric. And I wish I'd gotten a picture. It sounds like a big one and blah, 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 off it goes. Um, if it had been, <laughs> I remember this. Oh gosh, I remember this on a retreat a guy housed in England. It was a month long retreat. And I remember when I first got there, the windows were open in summer and there's a lot of amazing trees. And then there's these birds there, a particular bird that has quite a distinct call and there's a lot of them. And at first I was like, oh, so beautiful. It was pleasant Vedana. And I, the mind just went off in story about how beautiful the sound of the birds. It wasn't very long before I was very annoyed with the birds. I was like, oh my God, shut these birds up. Somebody close the windows. It's crazy. Like it just was like this cacophony all the time. So you can see the Vedna is not in the object. It's not constant. It changes over time. But either way, it creates mental formations when not seen clearly, just as the bare contact. Um, so that's just like 
a little example of one sense door, how that contact happens, the, the Vedna spins into perception, which spins into the stories. And, and where the story is reinforced and like backed up and filled out and justified and clung to. Is there more? Yes, the mental, the Sankara's mental formations, there's so much more to it, but just as how they're related to the five, these five aggregates of becoming have a lot to do with kama or karma in that they reinforce, they're, they're creating future becoming. And also they're a result of previous experiences, previous karma. <laughs> and All of this is in the context of it being clung to and not seen clearly. When we see clearly, oh, mental formations. When we can just notice, oh, caught in a story, creating me. And, and then creating the world that I'm experiencing at the same time. When that's seen clearly, then there's there's no suffering there. It's just like, ah, oh, there's that wonderful system kicking in in its habit. Um, but most often it's not seen because it, these are deep grooves, deep habits and automatic, very instant processes that just happen which is why it amazes me so much that the Buddha could, was able to slow down and have enough space and awareness and clarity to watch these things arising over and over again. In each of these five aggregates, their Buddha had offered an image to help us see its true nature uh, called a simile. And the first simile for form, this form that I take to be me or that I take to be this glass or anything else, was compared to a, a lump of foam floating down a river. You know, when there's like, yeah, different conditions and sometimes there's a lump of bubbly foam and it's like all these different aspects that create this thing that feels so solid and permanent and continuous. When seen with wisdom and clarity, we see it's all just little arisings and passings um, that aren't as solid or permanent as we can sometimes mistake it to be. The second aggregate of Vedna or feeling tone um, is described as a, just a single bubble, like from a big rain on a lake, and then it creates a bubble that pops, just one bubble. So this feeling tone is very ephemeral and changing all the time, different for everybody, different even for one person across any period of time, just like the birds I described. And so when seen clearly, it's just like, oh, unpleasant, <laughs> pleasant or neutral. It's just a little bubble. And uh, the third aspect of perception 
see if I can remember. Perception, the simile was, it just escaped my mind. Oh yeah, mirage, uh, like in a, a desert and we see a, an oasis, a, a mirage. And as we get closer, is not there, it evaporates. So when when seen, not seen clearly, the perception that this is a glass, if I looked really closely, you know, get out the, the big microscope and see into the molecules and see that everything's vibrating and flowing and changing and um, impermanent, then the mirage is seen clearly. It's, we see that it's just an illusion. All right, so that leads us to the simile for this one, mental formations or sankharas. And this, this simile, the, the image, the teaching for this one is of a banana tree or a plantain tree. And you can, you can look this up on Google, maybe you already know this, but a, a banana tree is actually not a tree at all. <laughs> a banana tree, tree is a, a really big, it's called a herbaceous plant with large leaves that are rolled up over one another, like a cigar. It's just made of leaves rolled up. And, um, but together they look like a trunk. It's, there's no heartwood in it, what's called, or, or there's no uh, even sapwood or heartwood in it if you cut it. Um, you can see it's just leaves and leaves and leaves all rolled up. And another term that comes up in this simile that I'll read in a moment is of heartwood. So heartwood is, it means the dense inner part of a tree trunk yielding the hardest timber. Okay, and so this is the simile that the Buddha offered to teach us to see clearly what mental formations are. Now, suppose that a person desiring heartwood in quest of heartwood, seeking heartwood, were to go into the forest carrying a sharp axe. There they would see a large banana tree, straight, young, of enormous height. They would cut it at the root, and having cut it at the root, would then chop off the top. Having chopped off the top, they would peel away the outer skin. Peeling away the outer skin, they wouldn't even find sapwood, to say nothing of heartwood. Then a person with good eyesight would see it, observe it, and appropriately examine it to them, seeing it, observing it, and appropriately examining it, it would appear empty, void, without substance. For what substance would there be in a banana tree? It's not even a tree. And so in the same way, a student, a practitioner, um, somebody on the path, as we all are, if, if you're here and listening, you're on the path. Um, in the same way, we observe and appropriately examine any fabrications, mental fabrications that are past, future, or present, internal or external, latent or subtle, common or sublime, far or near. And to us, seeing them and observing them appropriately examining them, they would appear empty, void, without substance. For what substance would there be in fabrications? Because we can see that the layers and layers and layers of stories that we build up around ourselves, around each other, around our world.
that obstruct clear seeing. So it's not to say that there isn't, um, you know, experiences, there, there isn't um, knowledge about things that can be gained. Um, but to see when we're adding, when we're creating a self um, and clinging to these mental formations. Yeah. I think that's all for now. Let me just see. Yeah, so all of these aggregates, we introduced this in the first session and we're going to end with it next time on the fifth one. All of these are part of what creates suffering for us. This is part of the definition of dukkha. These five aggregates conditioned by clinging. So when there's a clung to as being me and mine, you and yours, this and that, that's when we create suffering. We can't stop these systems. This is just how this whole system is wired and how it rolls. But we can see clearly what's at play and when we're hooked and when we're reinforcing and justifying our position. Um, yeah, and in that there's freedom. Okay. Uh, so remember, this is just a introduction to very complex stuff, but um, hopefully helpful. Uh, all of this is continuously happening so fast that it becomes mistakenly perceived as reality, as something as constant, as true, as um, reliable. And it's really important to see it clearly for what it is. All right. So now we let all that go, <laughs> let it go, and we practice. And we practice to still the mind and heart and develop clarity so that we can see clearly later tonight or tomorrow or later in your day, whatever time you're watching, and we can notice when we're hooked. So let's get ready for our practice now. You can. Uh, Adjust your posture, um, dim your lights, get any cushions you need, etc. As I often say, if you're experiencing a lot of pain, you can lay down to practice or fatigue and then but we are practicing practices of awakening. So um, even though you can rest the body, it's one of the postures of meditation. Um, you might want to raise up your forearm so that it will fall if you're falling asleep and wake you up again. Um, if there's a lot of sleepiness, some folks practice standing meditation or walking meditation. So see what posture supports you. And we want to bring in these supports so that we can invite stillness. Even if we're practicing with a moving form like walking meditation, there can still be an inner sense of stillness of anchoring the attention down to the feet. And if we're reclining or standing or 
sitting, we're bringing the posture into stillness. And then choosing a resting place for the eyes that supports your energy and your practice tonight. So you can practice with the eyes slightly open, receiving a bit of light. And some prefer practicing with eyes closed. In either position, there's a restfulness to the eyes. And as the uh, body comes to stillness and rest, we really allow a nice amount of time to just arrive and settle. So first noticing if there's any tension in the habit places of the body that could let go a little bit or a lot. Can be some of these habit places are the eyes, jaw, neck, shoulders, hands, belly, so as the upper body begins to relax, we may experience more sensation of settling and ground contact pressure through the hips, legs, feet. And then we can just let the awareness include this whole body, this form, this first aggregate, with all of its sense doors, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, all the skin and sense faculties of touch. But just a soft awareness that this sense of me is being gathered through all of these ways of meeting the world through these sensations. And we can invite 
a spacious awareness, like a sphere of attention around and including this whole body. And just this sense of aliveness that's known through these senses in this moment and this and this. And we might have the awareness that all of these experiences are really like a flow. They're coming and going. There's sounds coming and going. Tastes are changing. Scent. Even if the eyes are closed, there's light and shadow changing and moving. And all the sensations in this body of touch are moving, vibrating, tingling, flowing. So seeing it, observing it appropriately, examining it, we can perhaps have a sense of this lump of foam that we're not as solid and permanent as it sometimes seems. It's just all these experiences coming and going right now. And then at some point, there may be some contact through any one of these sense doors that kind of catches our attention a little more. Could be a sensation in the body where there's some pressure or discomfort growing. Try and remain still so you can really examine it. Or it could be there's a sound happens in your environment that's jarring or pleasant, however it is. Um, so any one of those sense doors, you may notice a tingling or tickling sensation. So whatever stands out for you in your experience, see if you can have a sense of what the feeling tone is of it. Is it pleasant, unpleasant, or neither? And if there's something arisen that feels unpleasant, we might notice that we kind of name it. 
oh, my foot is uncomfortable or sore or that's a nice bird sound, whatever is happening. The naming happens, the memory happens. And even a sense of self is arising there. It may be that a mind state has arisen, the mind being one of the sense doors. It could be sleepiness or restlessness aversion, and then check out the feeling tone of it. Is it pleasant or unpleasant mind contact? And then there may be, at times, mental formations that come along. So I'm feeling pressure in the position of my feet on the legs of the chair. The Vedana of it is unpleasant. The naming of it, foot, chair, etc. And then the mental formations are Hmm, I'd like to move my feet, but I shouldn't move my feet. I've asked them to be still. I should be still. But nobody's really going to notice. It's pretty uncomfortable. I'd rather be comfortable. And on and on the story goes. Sometimes you might notice some of the stories that reinforce. And sometimes we can just name the Vedana unpleasant. There was just a loud sound in the house here, and the mind just noted it as unpleasant Vedana, and then there was no mental proliferation with it. If there's nothing standing out in your experience that's catching or hooking the awareness, you can just rest with that first aggregate of form and feeling its nature of arising and passing.
Well, sometimes you might recognize that the mental formations are happening when you catch the word I in the story. Or she or they. Desiring heartwood, chopping down a banana plant, peeling away the outer skin. We would see, observe, and appropriately examine it and see that it's empty, void, without substance. And in the same way, we can see our mental fabrications as being what they are, layers and layers of story.
Thank you for joining this practice. If you've practiced with us on YouTube and uh, there will be one more part to this little mini introduction um, next week. So uh, see you then. <laughs>